Hey, hey guys, it's Ryan with My Listing Club. In this video, we'll be continuing on with the educational series, how to build an online business with the My Listing WordPress theme. As we've done throughout this series, we'll use the My Listing Project template as our guide. And the project template can be found by going to the My Listing Club website. That's mylisting.club. If you scroll down the homepage just a little bit, uh, and click on the My Listing Project template card. It'll bring up the product page. It outlines what it includes. Uh, what it's tested up to, so the WordPress version, the My Listing version, and the Elementor Pro version. There's also a walkthrough video, but you're going to get a first-hand look at this thing as part of this educational series. And then I have a change log. I am pretty much updating this template on a weekly basis, multiple times per week, let's say. Um, it, you can get your hands on this template as a one-off purchase. I also include it with any starter site purchase. But if you want to get your hands on all of the things that are I'm constantly changing and updating, uh, then you can get that as part of being an ultimate ultimate uh, member or signing up for my website care plan. Okay. Enough about that. Let's go ahead and uh, let's get to work here. So here we are looking at where we left off uh, with the the project template, and we are now working on the my listing column and in this video we're going to be tackling the theme option all of the theme options so one two three four five six seven eight nine task cards we're going to knock out in this video and as i like to point out uh as i've pointed out throughout this series with this template if you work top down left to right you will be able to build an online business just like i have uh with the my listing theme it's, it's uh, structured that way, so it fits pretty much any business. Sure, your business might be slightly different to where you don't need a couple task cards, or maybe your, your approach might require you to change a task card uh, or two around, flip-flop them. That's totally fine. You can jump around. But the main thing here is to, get, you know, to hit that 98% of you, 99% of you, uh, to where this will just work flawlessly if you follow that flow, okay? So let's go ahead and get into this theme options general is where we're going to start. So if we jump into our WordPress uh, website here and we click on theme tools and theme options, that's going to dump us right into the area we need to start with, which is, uh, well, actually didn't. We need to jump up there to the general tab. The first item up here is the site logo. You only need to specify a site logo if you're using the default My Listing header. If you're going to go with a Elementor Pro custom header, then you can just skip the site logo here. So we're going to go ahead and add one here just to show you. We've done that. Okay, the next up is the accent color. This is the color that's going to be shown all throughout the My Listing website. It's used in tons of spots. You just want to choose one of the colors from your brands that really sticks out. Um, and uh, yeah, if, if you look at my logo, for example, like that yellow might be a good candidate. So let's just go ahead and uh, let's set something close to that. All right, I think that's good enough for now. Um, the next item up is the background color. By default, my listing sets this off white color. Uh, I like to start off with a really clean look, so I choose white for the background and adjust from there. Totally up to you what you want to do there. Next item up is loading screen. I do not recommend using this. Uh, any professional website out there, any big name brands, uh, just anybody that wants a professional looking website, uh, they don't use the loading screen. It's, it, it's kind of gimmicky, it's cheesy. Uh, and if your site is slow, having one of these loading screen images just constantly uh, rotating in your face uh, could just get, I don't know, it just further highlights how slow your site is. Hopefully you don't have a slow site, um, but even if you don't, this is going to add a slight performance ding. If you go with one of these built-in um, items here, it's a slightly less ding than if you use, like, say, a logo. But it really becomes a noticeable difference if you upload a site logo that is not optimized. So let's just say your site logo is multiple megabytes. It's going to just make your website that much slower. I just recommend don't just don't use this. That's that's just my opinion. Uh, next up is the login register page background. 
if we look at this website um, as a non-logged in user right now from the front end, this is what they're going to see. It's just super basic. Uh, yeah. Let's go ahead and flip this background in here. So we're just going to, we want to choose a background. I recommend a background that's at least 1920 pixels high, and that's for full HD. That gives you the best chance of having a non-distorted, not you know, blurry image on larger screens. Okay. Um, and this one, for this video, I've got a larger one. That's just, that's just for the video, but uh, to give you the idea. So we're going to go ahead and uh, save our changes here. I'm going to bring back this page and refresh it. So let's do a before and after. You can see the dramatic difference. It just looks way more professional. And you can use this image area to, you know, to put information in there. Uh, it can be an image, but it could be an image of something that, I mean, I don't recommend using a lot of text usually, but you could get creative and you can really do stuff with this area. Just get the, or just use an image. An image works great too. Uh, but as we see here, the accent color that I set, is, you see how many places this thing shows up. You don't have to worry about perfecting your accent color right away. Uh, I I am known to change the accent color, uh, you know, uh, multiple times as I go along. Okay, uh, not a big deal. Okay, let's go ahead and get that out of the way. Uh, I am going to go ahead because I'm going to set this to black, a shade of black. Okay, and save that. Let's go ahead and jump over to our header. Um, as you saw, this purple up here, uh, obviously we don't, well, I'll say obvious. Likely you don't want that purple header to be there, but you know, I could be wrong. Uh, really quickly, you see that I changed my uh, accent color to black because I'm going to kind of build a little theme here as we go along, a theme, a brand. Um, so yes, yeah, so we saw, if we look at, also look at the front end of the site, so this is our homepage. You can see that purple in there. Um, for the purposes of this video, just to keep that brand going, I didn't mean to poo-poo the purple color. It's not a bad color. It's just, it's not bad. It's not good for my brand is what I should have said. So, uh, no big deal there. Header height is defaulting to normal. If you set this to extended, all it's going to do is add a little bit of a uh, padding to the top and bottom of your header. There you go. So just... You see the before and after just makes it a little little thicker there. Uh, I like to just go with normal, but totally up to you there. Um, next up is the header width. So as you see here, it stretches all the way to the left and goes all the way to the right. Another, uh, another option is to choose boxed. That's going to bring all of that content closer to the center of your page. And when you do that, it unlocks this header width and it defaults to 1120. I recommend at a minimum to set this to 1140, which matches Elementor's default content width. Okay, you don't you don't want your header. Well, you might. I guess it depends on the application, but typically, I, I don't think I'd want my header to be skinnier in uh, more inside the content by 20 pixels. It's not that big of a discrepancy, but you know that's just me. If I am using a boxed width, uh, I use 1200. Uh, and luckily, you know, my listing gives us that. Otherwise, we would have to use other means to, to force that to happen. Um, this 1200 is the width that I, I set in Elementor as well as my content width. Okay? Uh, you can use whatever, do whatever you want there, but do, I recommend not going any lower than 1140. Okay? Uh, so I'm going to set the header width back to full. I'm going to change the header background color to match my branding. So we'll just set that. The border, that's fine. So now when we refresh, we should get, you know, my branding is starting to take place. The logo matches the branding, the header does, and so on. Uh, next up is sticky header on scroll. That's pretty much what it sounds like when you scroll down a page. Uh, the header is going to stick to the top. Let me add a bit of content to my home page. I 
I'm gonna make this text really big. I'm gonna show you why. You'll know why here in a second. Okay, let's just go ahead and duplicate this multiple times. Okay, so here we see we've got our black header background. And then when we scroll, we see the, the header dips back. And then as you scroll back up, the header comes back. So that's, that's our setting here, sticky header on scroll, okay? Uh, the next item up is menu, main menu location. Oh, I skipped the header border. That's pretty self-explanatory. If you want to add a different colored border uh, that appears right below the background, you can do that. Uh, main menu location is currently set to the left, so you see that right here. I don't think I've ever seen anybody actually use that setting, so um, it's almost always set to the right. You, and the next one up would be center. Uh, I've seen a few sites that do that. I actually even have one myself that I've centered, but I did that with an Elementor header. Uh, so let's set that to right. Uh, we'll go ahead and show you what that looks like. There you go, pretty simple. Just drop the menu over by the uh, user avatar up there. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take this time to, to clean up that menu. So I'm gonna go to Appearance, Menus. I'm gonna create a menu. I'm gonna call this Primary. Then I'm gonna set the display location to be prim the primary menu. Create, refresh. There we go. But we see we have no menu items up there. That's fine for now. Uh, we'll go ahead and leave that. All right, next up is the logo height. So I'm not sure why they do this out of the box, but your, your logo height on desk, desktop is, is typically going to be bigger than it is on any of the other devices because it's just a bigger screen. So uh, I typically go 80 pixels on this. So 80, 50, 40, that's probably fine. You just gotta do what works for you. Let's go ahead and refresh this. There we go. So we see the logo starts to get bigger. And it also depends on your the logo itself. You just gotta you just gotta work with it until it gets to the way you want. And you might have to set that extended header if you really want your logo to be uh, bigger. There's just a lot of options, too many to cover and um, cover here in this particular video, but uh, you get the idea. Um, oh, let's for fun, let's set this to 200 to see what happens. Oh, that's okay. There we go. I always go with the max then. I guess I totally forgot that. So yeah, the max is 80. Um, you can do that outside of the theme if you want to use some code snippets. But another thing to keep in mind here is that they give you the option to do it for desktop, tablet, and mobile. One of the downsides of not using Elementor here is that you're missing out on a lot of mobile responsive options. So you, there's no desktop media query screen size here. There's no tablet extra. There's no mobile extra. You just get these three options. Uh, by and large, you're probably going to be okay. You just you got to make sure that you test these devices and make sure that everything looks good across all of them. Okay. Next up is the show search form. So that is this form up here in the top left. And as you can see, it says type your search. That is coming from the search form placeholder. So you can change that text to whatever you want. Uh, next up is the search form featured categories. For that, you can specify what happens, what categories automatically appear when you click, just click into this box. So let's go ahead and check that out. So if we go to listings, categories, let's just add category one. And let's do one more, category two. And then let's go back to our theme options. And let's set both of those. Now when we click into this box, it's automatically gonna pop those up. And if I were to click on one of these, it's gonna, it's gonna take me to the explore page that I've specified, which you'll see here in a second, um, and filter automatically by those categories. Moving on down, show 
show call to action button. This is the button that you, you've probably seen. If you've seen any of my listing site, there's typically a button in the top right of the screen that says, you know, add listing, add business, start here, get started, you know, that kind of thing. That's not going to appear by default until you have um, the necessary, necessary things in place. So we'll go ahead and add those as part of this video, little, little bonus material. Um, so first up, let's make, let's check our pages here. We need an add listing page. So let's go ahead and create that. We're going to go ahead and edit that with Elementor. Mentor, Mentor. Uh, we need to add our add listing form. So we're going to add that. And then we don't have any listing types. We need to add a listing type to this. So let's go ahead and create a listing type. We'll just call this uh, listing type one. Publish. Refresh our uh, refresh our add listing page here. So we've now added that listing type to our add listing page. We'll go ahead and publish this. Okay, let's refresh our home page. But as we see there, we still don't have that CTA. So we need to go back to our theme options. Scroll down, we're, we're still in the header, the theme options, we're still in the header area. We need to specify the call to action links to page. So we just need to specify our ad listing page there. This next uh, item up is the label. So you can put whatever you want in here. Like I said, ad listing, ad business, add your business, start here, whatever. So there we go. We have our call to action button up there in the top right. Okay, moving on down, do, do, do. what's up next? Uh, show, show cart, so that is this icon up here next to your uh, user menu and call to action button. Uh, if you're selling anything on your website, I recommend just leaving this on. Uh, you can get creative with code snippets and you can hide the cart uh, if someone's not logged in. Um, or if under other circumstances, like maybe if it's empty, don't show it. You can get creative with code snippets there. But I would recommend just by default, uh, consider having that on if you're selling something on your website. Show title bar below header. I'll show you what that looks like, but I've never actually seen anybody use this. So it adds this bar underneath your header with the name of the page. It's just, it looks super unprofessional. I don't even, I've never seen that before on a website period, let alone my listing. Uh, totally up to you there, but I'm gonna toggle that off. All right, the last section here for the header is the on scroll stuff. So as you've seen here, when we scroll, the header turn it's purple, right? So for the purposes of this video, let's, let's make that our black. So we're gonna have the same color of background, whether it's scrolled or an unscrolled state, okay? Uh, we're gonna leave our logo the same, but you could set an alternate logo. So I could actually, for the unscroll logo, make it so maybe it has a white background and uh, the unscroll header background is white. So it's kind of flips from black to white. That'd be kind of a, a cool look. But for this video, we're just gonna leave uh, that as is uh, because we don't specify it, uh, an on scroll logo is just going to pull from the logo under our uh, general section from before. Okay, and the same thing applies uh, the, the text color, um, the same thing as what applies up here in the header. Okay, all that's the same. So let's go ahead and just update that, and we'll see that both headers are now black whether we scroll or not. Okay. That does it for the header section. Let's move over to the footer. Now, the header thing is debatable. The my listing header is very nice. Uh, it's, it's, it's awesome. It's good stuff. Um, you can do some crazier stuff, obviously, with Elementor Pro, and it unlocks a bunch of features like display conditions and whatnot. So that's debatable. What I personally do not think is debatable is the footer. I just can't imagine using the my listing footer. I would 
if you've got access to Elementor Pro, I would put a custom footer in. And the reason for it, there's a couple, a couple reasons. As you'll see here, I'm about to show you, it's very difficult to style, to build and style a footer in my listing, uh, especially one that looks good. The other thing too is footers are starting to become way more uh, robust and uh, a necessity in web design these days. It's, it's, it used to be like you go to the header and then there would be like a mega menu and you'd get all kinds of information and the footer would be, you know, nice and built out. Uh, but it's getting more and more where the footer is just like, it's almost like a website in itself. It's, they just, they can offer a ton of value in terms of navigation and uh, information and things like that. So not, you're not really going to achieve that with the my listing footer, uh, if we're being honest. But uh, let's go ahead and dive in and see what this thing does. Obviously, show footer, uh, it's going to show your footer. You toggle this off, it's going to go away. So here on the home page, we see the footer starting to take shape down here. Um, if I toggle this to, to say turn off the footer, obviously, we're not going to have a footer. Okay, let's go ahead and put that back on. The other thing, uh, the other thing I wanted to mention was... I'm going to go back to the display condition. So imagine like you want to create a frictionless checkout. So the cart or the checkout, or what I like to do too is keep my listings really clean and not, and not put a footer on there. Depends on the project, but, or maybe a different footer. Maybe you want to put a footer that's just for listings. You can actually do that, but you cannot do that with the default my listing footer. The other thing that's really important to point out is that you don't have to have a custom Elementor header and footer at the same time. You can mix and match. You can have a custom header and just the default footer or the other way around. Um, yeah, it's just totally up to you what you wanna do there, but I would say at a minimum, do a custom footer with Elementor, okay? All right, enough about that. So we see that the footer background is white. Uh, we can change that. Let's change that to our branding. Show widgets. To get into that, you need to go to Appearance and Widgets. This is where you're going to start to see the difficulty of building this thing. So um, right off the bat, it dumps you into the footer widget area. So whatever you set in here is going to appear in your footer. Okay. So let's just go ahead and click here and we'll add an item. Uh, let's just do columns. We'll do three columns. And in that first column, let's add a heading. We'll call it uh, column one. Let's add another heading in the second column. We'll call this column two. And finally, column three. Okay, and let's save. Let's go back to our theme options. Let's see, we've got our widgets in there. So what we're saying here by default is to show one widget per row on desktop. Okay, so it's saying show this widget in one row. Okay, so show all three of those columns in one row. So let's go ahead and uh, make sure we save our changes here. Let's refresh. We see the footer has changed from to black, but one of the problems you're gonna have you got to know CSS. So if you want to change this text, you, you got to know CSS. And same here. So edit that, apply the CSS to it. I'll go ahead and do it really quickly here. There we go. So that shows you where that is. Um, and then you would just build out these columns. Um, but if you're good with Gutenberg, you know, the new WordPress editor, um, you could probably do some good here. But even if you do and your design is, is, is good, it takes a while to build. And like I said, you do not have the display conditions um, out of the box with my listing to be able to show different footers on different things. Um, and you got to know the other piece is you got to know CSS. Um, as you see here, there are no options for the footer to specify colors. Okay. Uh, yep, that's that. And like with the header, you need to also pay attention to mobile responsiveness. Do, do these settings work for you across 
desktop, tablet, and mobile. And again, like the header, there's there's no options for to target a laptop or other devices like you can with Elementor Pro. So that's another disadvantage. Show footer menu. Uh, if you've specified a menu in WordPress, so if we go to appearance and then menus, uh, let's create another menu called footer. And we're going to specify the display location to be the footer. Okay, let's go ahead and add. Um, we'll add the blog, what the blog and the shop, and homepage. Okay, so you see that down here in the bottom. This is the menu that we added. Again, you got to know CSS if you want to change that color. Let's go back here. If we toggle this off, then that menu goes away. Okay, our menu is gone down there. Let's put that back. Footer text. This could be like, uh, this is a good area to do like copyright. Yo, yo. Uh, so if we do that, that's going to drop this line at the very bottom of our footer. See it down here? Again, I'm just going to keep harping on it. Got to know CSS to color, color that and style it. Okay, the last item up here is the show back to top button. You do not have to have the My Listing footer enabled to use this. So if I toggle this off, toggle everything off and I just have this running and I have a custom Elementor footer, this is still gonna work and I recommend you use this. So let's, let's, let's update this. We'll go ahead and take out our footer text. Let's go back to the top of our page. Okay, so as we scroll down, we don't see anything that has to do with scroll to top and that's because we don't have enough content. We have to have enough content to make it worthwhile to show the scroll to the top button because it is a slight performance hit, another one of those dings I talk about, and it's just a distraction. You know, why put it there if it's not needed? It takes two scroll clicks to get back to the top. So let's edit our homepage and let's put some more content on here. Okay, let's refresh our page. So as we scroll to the bottom now, we see we see that button in the bottom right. We click that, it takes us all the way back to the top. You can see how valuable that would be uh, to your people, okay? So that's what that does. I think that satisfies our footer area. Uh, so let's move on to Explore. First item up here is the default Explore listings page. So as this tech helper text says, this page will be used to display results from the header search form and to display listings by category. So I showed you earlier that search form in the header where we added those featured categories right here. So if I was to click this and my explore page existed and was specified here, that's where it would go. Okay. But right now we don't have an explore page. Let's go ahead and create that. I'm going to get into Explore pages later on in this uh, educational series. So we're just going to do it quick and dirty for now, but we'll just do a search for Explore. Drop that widget in. On the left hand side here, you're going to click Add Item next to Listing Types. And select your listing type and publish. So now let's go ahead and uh, let's go here. Do, do, do. Okay, so here is our Explore page. Again, like I said, rough and dirty. We haven't done anything to it. Um, we have no listings to show. That's, that's fine. Uh, let's go to our listings. Let's add a test listing here. 
listing one, we'll assign our listing type and publish. Okay, and let's go ahead and refresh our Explorer page. So there we have our listing. We don't have any categories yet. So this is a little outside the scope of, of this particular video, but we'll go ahead and knock this down. Let's just add a category field really quickly to this. Okay, so we've added our category field update. Let's now go and update our listing and put a category in there. Let's put our category one. Okay, so now if we refresh our Explore page, we have a category in there, okay? So now let's say we're on our home page and we wanted to click that feature category we set earlier. Let's click category one. There you go. Now there's way better stuff you can do than what I just did there as far, you know, as far as building this out, but that's just to show you what that does, okay? If I click category two, there are no listings for that, so that's gonna do that. Okay, so we've got our Explore page. Let's go ahead and specify that here. Okay, and next item up is listings per page. So um, let's go back here. So we have the one listing and we see that it's showing one result. Let me actually, let me, let me edit the, let me edit the explore page one more time. Let's, let's blow this thing up closer to where, yeah, that looks fine for now. Okay. So showing one result, that's all the listings that we have, but what if you had a thousand listings, right? One of the, one of the common requests is I want my, map to look heavily populated. I want to show all of my listings on there. Um, one of the ways to do that is to increase this value to a high number. Uh, we'll just call it 100 for now. So if I set this to 100, whatever the default filter is that's coming in, uh, as you see it here, as you configure it, if you have 100 listings that match that, my listing is going to load all of those, okay? Um, if you have a thousand listings, but you only specify 100 here, what you're going to see is showing results uh, 100, and then there's going to be pagination, so they have to you know scroll the pages to see the rest of the listing. Uh, it, it totally depends on what you're trying to do and accomplish um, with your particular build. One thing to keep in mind is performance. When you load a ton of listings on the Explore page, you got to pull in all of the images, all of the icons for the map, you know, all of the location information. All of that information has to be pulled in. Uh, one way to get around that and display more is by doing multiple Explore pages that are for specific things, categories. Um, whatever, listing types, whatever it may be. Uh, sometimes I like to split up the listing, uh, explore pages by listing type. Uh, that way you can, you can display more to what, and show the person what they're looking for, display more listings at once without just having this mega explore page that's bogged down, if you know what I mean. So there's just lots of ways to go about it, but that's what this setting is for, okay? That's the main thing I wanted to, to show you there. Uh, the default ad listing page, we created that earlier, so we'll just we'll specify that here. As this helper text says, this page will be used for actions like relisting, expired listings. The, the nuts and bolts of this thing is this is your ad listing page you're specifying here, the default one, okay? All right, that's all there is to do in this area, really. So uh, we'll go ahead and move on to the next, which is single listing. So let's go ahead and pull up our listing here. I'm going to close some of these pages out. Okay, so we're looking at our listing here. Um, the header height, we see it's the same thing as the header for uh, my listing. You know, deep, normal, and extended. Extended, like I showed you earlier, is going to add that padding. 
It's just going to add a little padding to the top and the bottom of the header. So up to you if that's the look you want. I typically go with normal. Uh, the same thing is with the header, the, the text color, um, and the background, and the border. So we're just going to match the branding here. The header width, same exact thing. Do you want it to be full width or do you want it to be boxed and, and set a, a max width there? We'll just keep that full width. Um, we'll go ahead and see, check out our changes real quick. Okay, so things are starting to match our branding. Everything looks good and all of that. Uh, let's see. The next item up is the um, this header preset. Let me pull up my notes here. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, so I tested this thoroughly. I mean, feel free to let to reach out to me and let me know if you found something different. I have never found a situation where this does anything, um, and it's I don't I still don't really fully understand why the default is transparent if you've got a setting that's called default. But uh, maybe there's a, a good reason for that. But if I set it to be default, let's go ahead and refresh both of these, make sure they're the same. So let's set this to uh, default, see if there are any changes. Yeah, I'm not seeing any. Let's change it to dark skin. Not seeing any. Light skin. same and i've gone through i've gone as far as changing the cover style to be like from a cover image to a gallery i've tried all of those combinations i can't get this to do anything um so i just i leave it alone for the most part uh actually yeah i just always leave it that way um the blend header with the cover section what this does is brings the cover area of the listing slightly up and under the single listing header i typically go with the default setting but some projects require this to be altered. Uh, so it just depends on the pro project. So if I untick this, we will see here that it kind of, it's going to expand the area. So here's the before it kind of brings the cover area under the header and here it brings it out, out from it. Okay. So that's what that does. Uh, cover image height. This only applies if you are using a cover image cover style. So let me show you what that is. If we edit our listing type, go to single page cover style, it, it has to be set to cover image for this setting to even matter. Okay, so we currently have that set. Let's leave the default and add a cover image to our listing. So we go to our listing type, let's add a cover image. And I'm going to go ahead and add a gallery image too because we're going to we're going to mess with that here in a second. And let's refresh our listing. We're going to add our cover image here and save. Okay, so that's the that's the height out of the box. That's that's a little too big in my opinion. Uh, it's too big of a cover. So. I like to knock this down to about anywhere between 20 and 25. There we go. So that's 20. That's on the lower end. Uh, now, if we jump over and let's say we set this, uh, the listing type to use a cover style of gallery. Let's then jump back over into our listing and let's add some gallery in. And let's go ahead, we'll refresh uh, this one. So that's how the gallery will look. And then this how is how the cover looks. So by using by using the cover image height of 20, you kind of get close to what would be with the gallery. So that's kind of why I go like in the 20, 25 range. I like to stick in there. That way you, you have a lot of room down here to show information. And they can always click on Especially with gallery, they can always click on the image to view it bigger if they need to. Uh, but yeah, so 
If that is what that setting for is for, if again, if you have the, if you're using the gallery style, it doesn't apply. So I can make this massive. Update the gallery listing doesn't do anything. But now if I was to set this back to cover. Boom. See, it gets crazy, <laughs> crazy big. Okay. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and take that off of there. Uh, cover image overlay. Um, I'll go ahead and save this here. By the way, my, my preference is I, I, I just, I tend to go with the gallery. I just really like it. Um, totally up to you what you want to do there. All right, so let's just work with the cover for now. But you see, there's this overlay. It's like a, it's like it's darkening my cover, cover image. So what you can do is, for one, you can change the the color. So if I'm gonna do like, uh, let's do yellow. And the default opacity is 50%, 0.5. Okay, so obviously right in the middle. You can set it anywhere from zero uh, to one. Zero is 100% transparency, which means zero overlay. If you set it to one, it's just going to completely solid out that cover and block it all out. Okay? Obviously, we don't want that. It defeats the purpose of having a cover. So, um, you know, let's go back to the point. Let's go to like point two. So we'll set it really low. Just give it like a little, a little hue. There you go. It has just like this little yellow overlay. Uh, which obviously set that to whatever you want, play with that. Um, yeah, similarly, so if we look at the explore page, the same, it's the same idea. And this is going to be anywhere that you have listing preview cards, not just your explore page, but you, again, you see this dark overlay, right? So it's the same thing. You can go listing preview overlay color. Change that to that same yellow, and we can do 0.2 again. Refresh. There we go. It's got that, like that slight yellow hue, and then it changes on hover. Okay, so that is that. So let's now jump over to the blog. So this is a neat feature that my listing is thrown in here. Typically. This requires an, an additional plugin or code, code snippet. Uh, so long story short, simply put here, this allows you to set a default featured image for all of your blog posts, regardless of whether you use the default My Listing single post template or you go with Elementor. Just a really cool feature. So let's, let's go ahead and look at this. Uh, if I go to the blog page, See, we have one post there. It's got no featured image attached to it. But if I go back to theme options and I add, we'll add this big image here as our featured image. Let's refresh our blog page. There we go. So it's just a really, really nice feature um, for adding a featured image Maybe you, maybe you, you're like me. I add the same featured images to all my posts. I'm, um, call me lazy, whatever. I just like the uniformity. I just, I just don't, I just don't find the need to make unique featured images. But I like to have an image in there. So, um, this allows me to set one image across the board. It ensures that I always have a featured image ad added. I don't have to manually go in and do that each time. It's, uh, it's just really nice. Uh, a nice, a nice, a nice option that they give us in there. Um, trying to think if there's anything else for me to say on that note. Um, you could also just use this as a fallback. So let's say you are into assigning unique featured images, but maybe you just you you forgot to add it to one. Um, at least you have a fallback, something something to drop in there in that case, so you maintain that uniformity in, across your site and consistent look. All right, let's go ahead and uh, let's see what we've got next. Next up is 
custom code. So my listing provides this convenient place to add code snippets, CSS, JavaScript, and raw code. Raw code. However, I don't really recommend adding code to this for a few reasons. One, you can easily break your site and there's no safeguards or warnings to tell you that you're doing so. So like, let's say that you're putting in some JavaScript or something and you, you, you know, you, you start putting in your script and you know, blah, 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 script, 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 blah, 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 script, script, script. And then you go to put like your closing script tags in. Um, and let's say, you know, you should you know, put a closing bracket in there. Let's, let's just say that you forgot to put a, a bracket, you forgot to clo close the code and whatever. And if you click update on your site, as you see here, there's my listing does not tell you that you've essentially broken your site. Um, uh, and there's a chance you might not have, but you know, if you've wrote some wonky CSS or JavaScript or raw code or whatever it is, uh, you just broke your site and you don't even, or potentially broke your site, you don't even know. There's no error warnings, there's no best practices, there's there's, just, there's nothing. Um, another one, so like if you're writing CSS, uh, let's say color, we'll set the text color to white. And if I add the important declaration uh, to force it, any good code editor um, tool should show you should throw up some sort of an alarm that you should not use important unless you absolutely have to and not only adds to your code bloat but it's just a bad way to code if you don't need to use important you shouldn't um, so that is another one um, you cannot easily reuse your code so if you let's just say you put a bunch of code in here uh, let's just say this is for your single listings or whatever, but you probably have a lot more than this. If you want to reuse this code somewhere, how do you do that? You got to come to your website, manually copy it. It's got to come from a source somewhere, but it would be nice if you had like a centralized location to store these snippets and, and the, to pull them down to other sites. Now, if all you're ever going to have is one my listing website, that that particular issue I have with this area, you know, is not a big deal. Okay. Um, the next one is there's no autocomplete feature. So if you want to learn how to code, um, or, uh, yeah, I guess basically learn how to code as you're writing the stuff in, um, you're not going to get it with this. Now, a lot of times you're just going to go to a developer or to my listing support or from me or whatever, and you're going to copy a code snippet and you're just going to drop it in. Okay. Um, you know, we all we hope that works. Whoever sources you the code and you get the code, you hope that works and everything. But you're always going to be reliant on somebody else. What if you want to make? Let's say that I give you a code and it's to change the button color to white, right? Well, let's say that. Let's say you want to do something else. You want to take that button and you want to change the background. You start typing here, and like there's nothing. Like you have no guidance on how to do how to do the background. Do I put color background? Da, 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 da. There's just no guidance. So that's what I mean by autocomplete and learning. It's just not there. And there's other reasons why um, I don't like this area, but uh, I'm going to show you an alternative. So let's go to plugins and add new. The name of this plugin is called WP Code Box. And if you followed any of my posts or, or any any guy any guides, anything like that, you'll know how much I, I preach this plugin. Okay. You're gonna see why. If you haven't already, you're gonna see why again. So let's just take those same shortcomings that I showed you before. Now let's say you wanted to add, we'll call it a single listing, okay? Uh, we'll call it single listing CSS. We're gonna change the type. The CSS, it's a CSS um, code snippet, right? Um, we're going to choose to run this on the front end. Now let's write that same code. Let's put in dot button and drop down here. Now let's say we wanted to put that background in there. You start typing B, just the word B. It's going to give you all of these options in here. And it's like, oh, I want background. I don't know what, you know, that's, let's do background. 
red, and that tells you it, it corrected us along the way. It showed we had an issue, and it showed that we don't now. So now let's say we were trying to put important in here to force the issue. It gives us a warning. Like the use of important is, is a warning. Like you should just not really a warning, but more like information. Like we just recommend that you don't do that. Okay? And if I go down here and I accidentally forget a bracket, it's gonna give me an error and it tells you why that you're gonna get an error. So you can imagine if this was like you're writing or pasting in JavaScript and you just wanted to verify that it was valid, you could kind of like just backspace on some of this text and see if it throws you errors, like verify it that way. Um, this is a really cool tool. And then I've got other videos on WP Code Box. I'm not gonna spend much more time on this, but you can start getting into display conditions. So you change where you want to run the snippet and you open a condition builder and you can set all kinds of things like which page you want it to load on, just all kinds of options as far as uh, where to display a snippet so it's optimized. You don't want to run the same snippet on every page, on every page load. Tell it where you want it to go. You can do time-based, day of the week, time. Like It's just crazy what this thing can do. It's, it's awesome. Uh, the other thing too is that once you do that, now you can save those snippets in the cloud, go install WP Code Box on another website, uh, connect your account to it, and you can just pull down your snippets at will. If you're, if you're supporting clients, you can easily drop those snippets into their site. Uh, if they have WP Code Box or you, or you purchase an agency license and you give it to them. It's just, it's a really, really awesome plugin. Um, you've got the repository where you, there's already pre-made script uh, snippets in here. I've added a bunch for my listing. You can just click on them and pull them down. Um, they've also, he's off, the developers also just launched a public space. It's in beta of where you can find publicly submitted uh, code snippets as well. Uh, yeah, I just really love this plugin and I wanted to point that out. Let's go ahead and get back to the theme options here. All right, so now we're looking, we're almost done here. Um, we're coming up now on the last two items. Uh, shop page is next. Let's go ahead and go to the shop page. We have no products, so let's go ahead and jump over here and create one. Okay, so out of the box, we've got, this is what it looks like. We add one product, this is, this is, this is what we're gonna get. Pretty boring, pretty basic. Um, the one setting, couple, the, the two settings that are in here, how many columns uh, of products to display. So let's create, we've only got one product, so let's create another. So because we've, we've specified we, in theme options, but let's by default, we're gonna display one product per column. That's what that setting is. So that's what, one column. Uh, let me refresh here. Uh, oh, sorry, I didn't publish this one. There we go. So one, one product on one column, one product on another column. So if we go back to theme options, if we set this to two, it'll drop those products side by side. So that starts to look better. I would probably go three here. There we go. Um, totally up to you. Another, just another downside to doing this is it's kind of like a reoccurring theme in here is you, you, the mobile responsiveness, you don't have any control or, or you don't, I shouldn't say any, you don't have any control of, of this particular thing. Uh, the shop page, but you just, you have limited control overall of just mobile responsiveness if you don't go with Elementor Pro. Uh, so I just, I just can't imagine building a website, a my listing website without Elementor Pro. Uh, the, you know, the free version is nice and all that. And it's great that they say, you know, you only need the free version, but the reality is that you need Pro. I mean, that's just, just being honest with you. Okay. So We've done that, but then what about the sidebar things? So what if we wanted to display a sidebar, let's say over here on the left, we need to build that. So just kind of like we did before, we need to go to appearance and widgets. 
and we need we want to edit our shop page sidebar. Let's just add something in here. We'll add a uh, we'll add a heading. Obviously, you wouldn't want to add a an H1 there, but you could just just for the purposes of this video. Uh, this one's going to be an H2. Okay, let's update that. Let's go back to our theme options. Let's specify our shop page sidebar. Let's go back to our products page and refresh. Now, why aren't we seeing the sidebar? What you have to do then is go to your, uh, your shop page. Edit the shop page. You can probably do a quick edit here. You want to change the template. We don't want the default because that doesn't allow for a sidebar. So you want to set sidebar plus content or content plus sidebar. Uh, one of those two. So this one will place the content on the left and the sidebar on the right. This one will do sidebar on the left. Let's do that. Refresh. There you go. So then you can build this out um, however you want. Um, so with this being a shop page, you could come in here and do, uh, let's try products list. We'll see what that does. Uh, didn't appear to do anything. Uh, all products. Um, I'm not sure why that's not showing. Uh, let's try something else. Products by products category list. Let's try that one. Let's try a drop down. There we go. You get the idea. But again, the problem is is styling. Um, you got to be good with CSS. I mean, you need CSS for this. You need, I mean, you just need CSS. If you, but if you if you use Elementor Pro, you, the the page builder you're familiar with, all this becomes a non-issue. So if we look at one of my starter sites, for example, and we look at the shop page, this is the kind of stuff that you can build instead of this. Um, let's look at another one. Let's look at Basecamp. Okay, let's look at one last one. Let's look at reach. You just see the difference. It's you know more professional, cleaner, uh, easier to work with. A lot more, a lot more features. Yeah, I just, I, just, I just can't imagine. It's, it's kind of like the uh, what was the other one? The blog, not the blog. Uh, the footer. It's kind of like the footer. I just can't imagine using. The shop page either well, at least the settings that are in here i should say okay enough of that let's get to the last item on our list and that is typography there's not much to say here uh, this is simply saying go to appearance customizer customize typography once you get in here uh, it's just various settings for uh, my listing um, specific things. So let's see if there's one in here I can quickly. Uh, let's do header. So you can go to your header, um, main menu. We don't have the menu showing. Let's do this quick search up here. This type your search. Let's make that some massive font. Uh, doesn't seem to be doing anything. Maybe I have the wrong element. Let's go ahead and put a. Let's go ahead and put a menu. Thought I I thought I put a menu on here. Let's check our primary menu, and uh, we'll, I'll get you out of here. Okay, so let's add the home page to our menu and save. There we go. So now we've got the home the home menu in there the home menu item. Let's go ahead and refresh our customizer. 
Now let's see if this home page menu item, if we can get this to blow up. So where was that? Uh, header, main menu, font size. There we go. Okay, so that's all that it is. And you can set the font weights. Um, go ahead and set it really thin. Whatever you want to do there. Um, yeah, I think that pretty much covers it. Uh, I got through everything I wanted to get through. Um, be sure to check the the uh, the guide as well uh, on the Mylisa Club website. As I'm going along, uh, I'm documenting this stuff as well. Build it. So if you do a search for this guy, I am building this out um, as we speak in, in near real time as I do these videos, as I update the project template. Um, yeah, so it's all going to be here for you in written form. It just goes on and on and on and I'll continue building this until we get to the end of this educational series. Okay, guys, I hope you found this useful and uh, you are enjoying the series. Please subscribe. Uh, to know when I, I do the next video and any other kinds of videos for my listing. All right, thank you. Bye-bye.